Hi everyone, welcome to this latest hints and tips video. Today we're going to be looking at how I prepare a photo ahead of creating a portrait or a commission piece. I do use for my, um, what I call my proper photo editing, I use a free program, a free downloadable program called GIMP. Um, it's an image manipulation program. Um, it's a, pretty much the same as Photoshop, in, but it's the fact that it's free and you can get lots of online tutorial videos on places like YouTube to learn how to do different things. But just for my general day-to-day -day quick photo edits, I use this online free program called BeFunky.com. So it's just BeFunky.com. And you can also get it as an app. Um, you can pay to upgrade. I have upgraded, but you can get everything you need in the free version. So you can use it here as a photo editor and also as a collage maker. And I think you can do things like web design, but I don't really look at that. So today we're just going to look at the photo editing side. And again, you can do this in other programs online like PicMonkey. Um, there's, there's several of them out there, but I just found this one first and I quite like it. So you can upload your image here, save the image, share it to different places. Along this side here, you've got different commands to do edits, touch-ups, add an effect, add an arty effect, frames, and all different things. So just to get started, just to show you quickly, we're just going to prepare a, an image ahead of drawing. So this is the raw image file here. Select this guy. So now you can see instantly at the bottom, this is showing this picture on my monitor at 22% of the full size. So if I zoom in, I can bring it up to, that's 133%, so you go 85%, you can take it up to sort of full size. So that's what the detail is like at 100%. So let's just take it right back down again. First thing I want to do is I want to crop it in to a nice size. So I've gone into the crop image on the left hand side. I'm going to go for a square ratio just to create a nice square portrait. So let's get these horns in. So I'm just going to bring this frame down and just frame this in nicely here. Move that box down a little bit. Bring it in a tiny bit more. And there we go. I'm just going to click the tick marker on the left hand side. And we've cropped our image. So you can see there it's brought it up now. We're up to 44%. Just means obviously as I've cropped into it, there's a less picture size to zoom into and enlarge now without losing the detail. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is just go over to this Beautify button on the left-hand side, about two-thirds of the way down. I'm just going to click on that because what that does is it enhances all the colours. It really makes quite a dramatic effect. I don't usually... it enhances to 35 here. I usually bring this down to about halfway, so down to about 17. But what it's done is it's just brought out all those lovely ochre orangey colours that are showing in the fur there. Next thing I'm going to do is go into the exposure. I want to add a little more light, so I'm just going to add in up to about number 40. Just increase the light that's in the picture. And I'm going to go back into that exposure tab again. I'm just going to increase the high highlights up to about 8, and also the shadows. And it's up to about 4. And again, what I've done then is just Rather than using the contrast button, I've just lifted all the highlights. And I've just darkened the shadows a tiny bit. So what I've done by doing this process is I've brought out the colour, I've brought out the highlights, and I've increased the dark shadows, so increased the contrast. And it's just created a more dramatic effect. And it saved my eyes a little bit later on, looking for the brightest areas and looking for those colours. It's instantly brought them out for me. So again, I mean, you, you can play with all these effects on this side. You can add other effects, but this is literally the basics of what I do for the colour part of the portrait. So I'm just going to save that now down into the same place. I'm going to 
before I save it, I'm just going to take it up to 100% as well. So it's up to one meg. That means I'm saving this at the full size um, for me to be able to zoom into later on. So if we put in edited cow reference, um, save it as a JPEG, and I'm going to save that back into this same folder as the original image is. Now what I'm going to do with this image is I'm going to change it to black and white. You can do this one of two ways. You can go into the effect button on this side and you'll see you've got black and white. And in here you've got different variations of the black and white image. So yeah, see that one's taking it way too dark. That one's taking it quite light. That first one, you just flip between the two. Some of them really brighten the, the background. Some you see here, this one here has got a bit of a reddy tinge, a bit of a greeny tinge. See that one there is really brought out where those highlights are as well. So let's go down to the bottom ones. See for me, these aren't working that well. So what I'm going to do is cancel back out of there. I just wanted to show that you can do it that way. If you go back up to the main edit file again, and you come into wrong one. <laughs> you come into, she says, the colour mixer, which is right at the bottom of that edit folder. This little black and white square at the top, the two triangles, will convert it to black and white. So there you go, I've got control of it now. I've converted it to black and white. So I'm going to click the tick box button and save that. Now drag this cursor all the way back up and let's go back into exposure once again. And in here we can do exactly the same thing as we did. All we're doing with this really, with the black and white version, is we want to really enhance our brightest areas and our darks. So that again, it's saving our eyes. We've, we've got it in the colour version, but this really just helps us see the brightest, lightest areas that we're going to use for our pencils and the real dark areas. So I'm just going to increase that con that, those highlights again. And I'm also just going to increase the shadows. So I've gone up to 8 with the highlight and 4 with the shadow. Again, if you want to use the contrast just a tiny bit, I'm going to bring that up to 4, just increase the contrast. And you can see here over the top of that mane, those really bright areas, and you can also see the real dark areas. Again, it's just a tool, it just helps you later on. So I'm going to click that now, and we're going to save this to the computer again. So it's the edited cow reference. And we'll just say black and white. Again, it's already up to full resolution. And we'll save that into the same folder. Now, one last thing we can do is flick top left. We're going to go from the photo editor to the collage maker now. And what we're going to do here is upload... our three versions. So I'm going to upload the original, the black and white, and the colour all into here. And I want to just literally line them up side by side so that I've got the true colour version in the centre, I've got the black and white extreme contrast version to one side, and I've got the enhanced colour version to the other side. So I've got three pictures, so I'm going to go down to grid, Select a layout that's got three. There you go. We've got three there along side by side. Go back to my photos. Um, I'll just click the auto fill. I know I've got to move them around. So let's move the original back into the centre. We've got our black and white to one side, our enhanced colour to the other. So I'm just going to go into. I go into that original image, I should be able to do it just by enlarging. There we go. And there you can see, so here is the original image in the center. It's quite soft in coloring. Here we've enhanced the contrast, the colors, the highlights. You can really see how that image pops and that's the one I will use most for drawing the actual portrait, but I will refer 
to this black and white image to this side as well, just to know where those darkest shadows are. So the eye that's hidden away, inside of the ears, nostrils, under the neck. And again, I'll go in and I'll save that now. And that'll be my main file that I keep flicking at. And then what I do as I progress the portrait is I will pop the portrait image update work in progress into the middle of this collage as well and I will be comparing my work in progress with the images either side I'm working towards if that makes sense I'll show that in another video though so let's save this image so it always saves as a funky collage I'll save it again as the highest resolution possible as a JPEG so I'll put in here um, cow comparison and I'll save that to the same folder and everything is in there together so I hope that makes sense obviously this program there's so much more that you can do with it um, but that's literally how I use it for basics and how I prepare um, an image for a portrait okay I hope you found that useful and I will be doing a couple more in the series on using this program okay thank you very much